Okay, we are live with uh, George from Wazuka in Kyoto. Hello, George. Good morning. Good morning. Good How are we doing today? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we also have uh, Ryan Moen in on the call. Um, uh, Ryan, uh, this is your first time meeting George. Me and George had a, a, a moment to, to talk um, before he came on uh, 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 the show just to test things out last, uh, I think, last week. Last Friday, I think. Last that Friday. was a genius idea. <laughs> 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 we made it happen. Made it happen. Um, exactly. So um, we're uh, we're going to be actually having some pretty cool um, conversations uh, today, or a really cool conversation today on Aracha. Um, mm. You want to tell us a little bit about uh, about w what that's all about, George? Yeah, definitely. Well, I thought I might uh, start for those people who haven't met Abubu yet and don't really know who we are, where we are, what we do, a little bit about where I am right now. Right. Um, so Abubu is a, a very small tea company in the heart of tea production area in Uji, in a town called Wazaka. And we produce uh, a huge amount of tea for such a small farm. And that's partly based on uh, the area we're in and what uh, this area historically produces and is used to producing. Nice. So I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about it as we get into the concept of uh, Aracha and talk a bit more about that. And well, um, for those who don't know, Wadzuka, right, is like one of the biggest producers of what is called Ujicha in, yeah. in Japan, right? It's Ujitawara and, the, and uh, that neighbors Wadzuka and Wadzuka that are just like, they are the ones that that are the sort of the producers of this very famous uh, national um, denotation, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, so Wazaka produces about 50% of all the tea in Kyoto, which is just an astounding num number. What a figure. For certain. Because this town, that might not, you know, that might sound like, oh, okay, Wazaka produces about 50%, but there's only 3,600 people living in this small town. So that's and, and it's so, not very hospitable to tea production either, right? Like it is for like old school style, but like mm -hmm. this idea of like tractors and machinery that's becoming more yeah. and more common. It's not as so it's very very mountainous. So there's like mountains all around. The town itself is based in a, in a in a valley. It's got a beautiful river running through, and it's a pretty much old style. So you can't be driving those automatic tractors or ride on harvesters. Uh, in the tea fields because I mean you're gonna fall off. So, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Yeah. So it's uh, everything's harvested uh, with a lot of manpower, a lot of effort, takes time, and driving to the tea fields is always an adventure because it's mountain roads the whole way. Right. So yeah, it's it's pretty fun stuff. So. Hmm. Yeah. No, that's cool. Um. What what. Uh, you, it's surprising to so you're um you're living in uh japan i assume i i yeah. don't take this the wrong way i assume you haven't lived there your whole life but uh <laughs> how, how, how long how long have you how long have you been in in, in kyoto and and what's what what why obubu and and i guess then we can talk about aracha okay uh so i'm well, I, maybe you can tell i'm originally from the uk uh you know don't know what gave that away yeah, it's, it's but it's uh it's a wild guess yeah i as as a as a as a Brit, you're born uh, in tea. The first thing you do out of the womb, you get dunked in a cup of tea, right? And you know, initiated the right way, right? And uh, from the, there, the the breast milk is served with tea, tea right? Uh, I mean, it is tea, you're right? That's yeah. A yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, amazing. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Yeah. So it's uh, it's one of those things where you always love tea but you never know where it comes from so when I was about 18 I, I got the opportunity to go to Sri Lanka and I saw a tea fa oh we lost you there George George hello oh there we are okay you're back okay sorry back. so you had an opportunity to go to Kyoto no to Sri Lanka oh, Sri Lanka sorry Sri Lanka yeah uh, and then I learned more about tea and I thought okay this is amazing I got to learn a bit more and uh, fast forward a bit of time and I I went to India and Nepal and did a Darjeeling tea tasting course and stayed in Nepal and worked in a tea farm and then helped teach other farmers how to improve their tea in that area and Very cool. uh, following that I decided to uh, like I had to work in tea okay. so I was looking for internships to get an international tea education 
So I, from there, I found Abubu. Abubu is very easy to find if you're looking for a TT internship. Right. And uh, at that point, I came on the internship in 2018, and I, I never left. So I was a full-time staff member from uh, early 2019. Very cool. Okay. Um, yeah. The the that's um, there's so many different regions um, in, in in the area. It's interesting that you're going to be talking about Aracha because. I mean, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that? I had, I had a question that relates to that choice of to being in Kyoto and that relationship between Aracha and, 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 and production in the region. But yeah, you want to maybe take it away and, and talk to us a little yeah, bit about... Go for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've got to be 100% honest, it's full disclosure, I've got a horrible, horrible habit of just, just talking. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> please, like, jump in and interrupt. Um, I, you know, I can talk about tea for a long time. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, I... Um, I my I guess my so well I well what is what is aracha let's let's begin with that like what what is people have heard of sencha people have heard of yeah. uh, people have heard of of ban maybe some have heard of bancha maybe some have heard of genmaicha is a popular one out there kukicha karigane there's so many different teas coming out of Japan uh, but sencha has got to be one of the most popular ones but we don't hear aracha talked about in yeah, in in, I mean, in North America what for sure. Is uh, even in Japan, it's if you said aracha to most folks, they would they wouldn't know what you're talking about. Mm, exactly. So, I mean, to talk about aracha, you've got like uh, two things: you have uh, shiagecha, and you have aracha. So right. shiagecha is tea that's undergone a, a refining process after uh, the tea has almost been made, and where they sort all of the different uh, components of this made material. Uh, into sort of leaves, stems, uh, veins, or dust, or smaller particles, mm. and you can go, you know, deep into that, and it's very fine. Um, but then it's blended to create specific flavors, right? And then after that, you're uh, so blended to create specific flavors, and then you're firing the tea as well. And these so the, the selections we got from you, these are these are both sencha, or is either one of them? Yeah. Sen? So. So you've got center of the spring sun on the left, which is uh, one that I also have right here. And I'll be brewing that as well. Cool. And I just got to say a, a shout out to one of our previous interns, uh, Karen Wong, who's over in Vancouver, who managed to get those to you. Amazing, so, hey? Like they arrived yeah. in time. They actually arrived this morning. Like we were blown away. And actually away. got hand delivered down a few blocks as well to my location. Yeah, so amazing. that is like Thank a... You. Stephen and Micah, oh my goodness, what teamwork! Um, team miracles. Yeah, team. team <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, shout out to our volunteers over here for certain. So, we, we, your tea was like arrived this morning and is in two different sort of presentation pods. The so one in James Bay and one in downtown. So, that's amazing. Okay, so um, I did actually uh, give uh, Ryan some aracha too to kind of show people. This isn't this isn't from Kyoto. This is from Fukuoka, but it would get the idea across. Um, so that's so that's aracha or shiagecha. I have some aracha. Okay, okay gotcha. Some ara. Okay, so is this this might be interesting for the viewers? This is a different style than what uh, what you're working yeah. with there, but it's kind of interesting. Do you have any aracha you can show the audience? Yeah, hundred percent. So let me just let's see if we can switch up the camera so we can get that beautiful close up on those hands. Yeah, for sure. I will. Totally do that. Give me one moment, guys. I wish I was more, more pro. I'm gonna have to go here, and then I'm gonna switch over to you, sir. Let's see. This is the. Oops. <laughs> George, which um, which one am I doing? Oh, Obubu tea or George for the pin? I think it's. George. I think it's going to be a boo boo tea. No, it's the reverse. It's the reverse. There we go. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. And we are pinned, and the audience can now see you. So, this is our spring harvest of an unshaded sencha. Okay. okay. So, although we would call this aracha, this is still sencha. And this is made up of that raw material, the different parts. I think we lost, yeah? Hello. 
I can still hear you guys. Okay. Your back. Is... It's made up of the different parts, yes? Yeah, made of the different parts. So we have like the stems here, and we also have these beautiful dark, uh, like glossy leaves as well. So these are beautifully rolled needle shaped leaves. So it's got all the different parts of the tea in there. Okay. And this is really what it is. It's, it's after the first processing, but we haven't separated out any uh, stems, veins, leaf, you know, all the material is there that's been harvested, has been processed, and that's what you've got right there. Right. So that is aracha. It's basically is, it's the like unseparated, unfiltered, un. Yeah. It's it's processed to the point where you can totally drink this, but yep. it's not considered a finished, presentable product from the Japanese perspective. Correct. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think to talk about aracha, maybe I could talk a little bit about shiagecha. Okay. Just to frame it for everybody, I think that might help as well. For certain. So, do you want to show us some shiagecha as well while we have this camera on? So, I've got some shiagecha here. Okay. So, I mean, the difference in them is stark, actually. And you can just see it. I mean, the cameras are not going to be so amazing over the internet, but it's amazing we can even do this. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the difference there. You've got here is the shiage cha on uh, I think everyone's left, and on the other side we've got some ah sorry aracha yeah. on the left and shiage cha on the right. So okay. you can see all the the spots of different color of the stems and uh, those veins and little bits from the outside of the stem that delicate part. So 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 interesting how they separate by color, hey? Like and and, and they have those electromagnetic machines that can yeah i mean they have a color sorting is a wonderful thing yeah. color sorting machines mind-blowing technology they put like a little waterfall of tea right. and there's a machine that kind of just shoots out all the different uh colors that they don't want and it's programmed to pinpoint precision with uh, air pressure just pushing out the material into different sections so it's really cool stuff pretty amazing hey um it's japan yeah <laughs> It's uh, just all that, uh, that, that amazing technology that, that, that makes it possible for certain. Um, uh, okay, so what is the difference between, say, like a sencha and a shiagecha? So, I mean, there is no difference between sencha uh, and shiagecha because uh, shiagecha and aracha are overall categories, I would say. Okay. Like parts of the process. So from there, you have uh, aracha after the first processing and we call this farmer's tea because the farmers can produce this tea and then it will be sold at auctions uh, and then it will be bought by wholesalers or uh, shage cha uh, producers who will then buy the raw, raw material which is aracha and then they will sort blend and fire the tea to create a specific flavor that they're looking for Makes so sense. when you find a, a shiage cha which is using you know very high grade sencha best of the best then it is like having a, an orchestra like playing an incredible symphony in your mouth mm. and you can taste all of these wonderful things and you're wondering you know uh where where like who w which musician is playing that particular <laughs> instrument and which instrument are they playing and how do they learn these things well, how, so, do, how do I how do I ma make this? So while you're explaining a little bit about the symphony of flavor, Ryan and I can perhaps uh, have that tactile experience at the same time. Am I? Uh, what is your so suggestion for? Should I do the kabuse sencha that was produced? I uh, mean, I'm gonna let you guys do either way because all of our tea that is sencha sun. is shiagecha. Right, right, makes sense. So I'm gonna be brewing some sencha of the spring sun. Now this is Aki's. Uh, favorite tea to produce because it's the hardest tea to produce. Can you explain who Aki is? Is Aki the, the Aki is our crazy president, <laughs> and crazy in the best way possible. Awesome. Is, okay. There's there is theory. My theory, my personal theory, is that he has matcha for blood. Uh, matcha right? for blood. Okay. Yeah, that's my personal theory. Okay. But others are saying that he turns in. He's actually a tea fairy, and at night he turns back into the tea bush. Oh, amazing. So, this is that, I mean, there, there's a lot of theories flying around, but he's constantly dancing, laughing, you know, uh, making everybody very happy. That's that's amazing. Uh, that is that so, sounds like a thing. rad person. He's a lot of fun. When you're harvesting with him, uh, he loves to sing Queen Queen songs. Oh. Queen songs. So, <laughs> what a character! Yeah. This is awesome. Okay, so he's, 
So I'm, I have five. So, so I would imagine I put I, five grams, the entire thing in the pot, right? Yeah, okay. the entire thing in the pot. And you're going to be wanting to brew, I would say the first brew with around 65 degrees Celsius water. All right. That's really, so, really long leaves. Yeah, I is mean, that... this is this is Arata. Oh, this is Arata. <laughs> okay, okay. It said Sencha on it, on the package. I mean, but Sencha, it can be Sencha. It's Shiagecha and Aracha are just different great, uh, different categories, overall categories. No, I, I hear you. I just I saw the package and I just assumed one, but maybe I wasn't understanding you. That this is this is the is this the style of the farm that you guys do um, Aracha as your Sencha? Yes. Okay, that's really interesting. Okay, that's really cool. Um, we worked with a producer once in Nara who did uh, something similar, and um, one of the guys that we work with in Wadzuka, he he's kind of vertically integrated and he does um, all the processing himself and it's really you know, been an interesting conversation um, around Aracha because almost like if you ser sell this in Japan there's this fear that people are gonna be like oh you know it's not it's not complete it's not presentable enough it doesn't look mm -hmm. like Sencha and therefore um, is this a product that you guys sell? This is how it's sold domestically, or is this something that you've done for the export market? Or uh, this is this is our products. That's so amazing. We we sell aracha, farmers' tea. Yeah. And we make all sorts of different teas. So I mean, I'll talk about so the shiagecha is you know, when it's when it's done right. Yeah. And you have that beautiful orchestra in your mouth. It's incredible to taste all those flavors. Mm. But you can liken this to say a whiskey or a wine that's been blended you know, year to year, uh, mm -hmm. also different seasons, but also different areas around Japan. And this can complement each other and create something beautiful. But what's more common is that people are blending teas to cover up the weaknesses of other teas. Right. So is, is this single cultivar? To, sorry? Is this single cultivar? Is this, is this a Yabokita? Yeah, this is Yabokita. Okay. Very cool. Uh, awesome. So sorry, please the continue. The spring sun is Yabokita. Okay. Okay. That's so very cool. We have we have an issue then with shagicha that they're blending the tea, and more often than not they're doing it to hide other flavors, and right. they're not doing it to uh, like enhance the end consumer's experience, which is which is pretty tough. But if you have a very delicious, high quality sencha, then why not drink it on its own? Makes you know, sense. Yeah. For the for the consumer, that's going to be the best thing possible. So are you suggesting that it, 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 it can be used to dilute things, but because of the, the consistency of the taste, you could just, that's why we're, we're tasting it today on its own? Mm, so consistency, I don't know whether I would say consistency mm -hmm. because each tea field is, is a living environment and a different uh, a micro environment and the terroir is different for each tea field. So right. you're going to get specific flavors and characters for each of those regions. Now, traditionally in Japan, uh, way before deep steaming, there was light steaming. Uh, basically, in Japan, we steam our tea to denature the enzymes responsible for oxidation. And this keeps it a fresh green tea. And the first type of steaming w that was done was, was light steaming. And this managed to keep the, the depth and character of the body of the liquor, whilst also keeping those high flighty uh, uh, aromatics, those surfines, which are so delicious and escape very quickly when you're brewing. Now, Shiagecha has a... Oh, we lost him again. No, it'll just be a few seconds, I believe. Okay. Hello? Oh, there you are. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying Shiagecha? <laughs> so Shiagecha, Shiagecha has a, like a, a firing process at the end. Right. And this firing process gets rid of those very high notes. Those grassy it also notes. It the flavor a little bit as well, making it more warm. Mm. So you're gonna get less of those those fine, high quality notes in the tea. So if we go back to Aracha, Aracha keeps those qualities. So it's in the interest of the, of the consumer if they want to be tasting a really high grade tea the way the farmer made it, not the way that the, uh, the blender has like composed uh, a way to cover up weaknesses in other teas. Hmm. So yeah, makes sense. This is why you call it farmer's tea too, right? It's because it's the exactly. tea that they're cupping when they, when 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 the farmers are are creating their teas. More often than not, this is the tea that they're drinking. 
um, especially when they're making their decisions on whether or not they've had a successful harvest. This is what they're bringing to the co-ops or the auctions to, to get bid bidded on. And this is what th what uh, the, the Otsaya-san or the, the tea companies are purchasing to create their own blends and then finish firing and creating a finished product, right? So it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting um, relationship that farmers have to Aracha, right? Because this is, this is, this is so much more familiar to them and not familiar to anybody else. And, and it, and it is more unique. It's so much more floral, right? There is a grassy component that I think, um, if you're really not used to it, you can find it borderline unpleasant in my opinion, but it does depend on the quality of the leaf. If you have really good quality, well-manufactured aracha, that grassy component is just part of that flavor spectrum, right? It's not an overwhelming part of it. And so that, actually, that begins, like where does that begin? Right. Where do you look for that quality? Where do you get that quality? And right. that's all from the farmer. Right. So you're looking in the tea field, good quality tea is made in the field. Right. So we do things a little bit differently. Aki, the crazy president I was talking about, is also our lead farmer. Right. And he does things a little bit differently. Where in Japan and in this area, people want to be able to harvest smaller leaf uh, when it's younger in the earlier part to get it to auction as quickly as possible to get those high auction prices for early tea. Right. We do things a little bit different. We want to uh, do a, a little bit of a deeper trimming, taking more material off the top of the bush right. in the very early spring. And this means we get fewer shoots, so fewer new tea buds. But bef because they're fewer, the tea bush has more energy to give to each of these tea buds. Right. So we get a more uh, characterful uh, cup of tea and with higher quality and more tea components that are so delicious put into each one of these buds. Because so that deeper cut. we're able to then harvest stronger, more tasty buds. There's less of them. Yeah. And we can produce a tea with this, which is already a very high quality tea. So that's exactly what this uh, Sancho of the Spring Sun is. Well, so well, for this Sancho of the Spring Sun, um, what am I... Um, so I would my, when I make aracha, I personally yep. do like a minute and 15 seconds or a minute and a half even. Whereas with a sencha, I often do a minute, and I just do a slightly longer extraction for an aracha than I would a sencha. Are, are you recommending that to me, or what am what am I doing with this sixty five degrees centigrade? Am I, and also the, the 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 gram to milliliter ratio? Would you suggest five grams for one hundred and fifty mils, or a little bit less, or a little yeah, bit more? Yeah, so about five grams for one hundred and fifty mils. I mean, this teapot's about uh, three hundred, and I'm just gonna put in. I'm just gonna eyeball it and spill tea everywhere. I was so excited for this show. I got this these uh, these teapots from Tokoname, oh. and they just arrived on Friday. I was like, "Whew!" So this excited. Is gonna, pretty good timing stuff, guys. I know, right? Like, look at his teapot. That's gorgeous. Isn't that gorgeous? Like, sorry, I have to show this off. I know it's your show, man, but I was just like, "Whew!" Look at that. It's like a little 180 milliliter Tokoname. Just blew my mind. I think I'm not supposed to have this little plastic piece on the end, but just to protect it. I know. I know. And it kind of helps it pour a little bit, but I don't know. Is it a thing? Should yeah, we, should mean, we keep them on? I'm just going to grab a cup. I'll be two seconds. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, so Ryan, um, I've set mine for a minute. Uh, if you can hear me, George, so was it a minute, a minute and a half? I would do a minute and a minute half. All right, a minute and a half. I'll okay. trust George on this one. Okay. George, do you want me to yeah. show your hands there? Or do you want me to... Be, I should probably move the yeah, camera. Yeah, we can do. Okay. That would be we beautiful. Yeah, that's a gorgeous shot. The top of it. Okay. Sorry. I don't know how well we can see that. Um, I'm actually, it takes me longer than I wish to go to your shot. I'll let you know when I have your hands. Yeah, no worries. I okay. mean, it's just brewing, so. Okay. Your hands are the shot. That's where they are. That that camera is the shot as, oh. Now. Okay. Oh, I'm in it too. There we go. Close up of you. Brewing tea. That's what's happening. <gasps> Okay, um, there's my minute and a half. So something you can also do is when you're brewing tea like this, you can kind of eyeball it. So I'm using a, a style of kusu, a kusu Japanese teapot, a style of kusu called a futanashi kusu. Right. And that literally means no lid. So it makes it very easy to see the tea you're brewing mm. and when it's going to be ready to pour. Awesome. And what's that going to look like? So 
what we're looking for is that change in color and this is something that comes with a little bit of time and experience with brewing but you want it the leaf to be un unfolding about 60 percent before we then pour the tea so that's kind of the Ooh. goal and you guys must be drinking a lot of tea today yeah i'm a little like how are you guys dealing with this caffeine content? well we're yeah, not... see, i'm not accustomed to it so oh. i'll be buzzing we're, we're still <laughs> we're still on speaker number four so we've only had like five cups of tea so far um so okay. what do you think um am i gonna do you choose my cup george should i go yeah. like should i go old Ooh. old school on the on my right your left there or should i go i would go glass you would go glass. I have this. Is like, yeah. you know, this 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 is like um, uh, Glen Cairn glass. Piece. This is like one best whiskey glass in the world. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it looks like a whiskey glass. Okay, awesome. We're gonna do it. Whiskey glass, it is. My buddy Pedro over at O Five T, he used to do all his tea service in wine glasses and for a bit there. It's pretty fun times, especially I mean, with these. We're, we're using these these glass cups as well and we want to make sure that we're able to see the beautiful tea sure and that. something else that you often get with uh shaggy cha is that nine uh 70 percent of all the shaggy cha is produced um well 70 percent of all the shaggy cha is a lot of it's deep steam tea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if we've got deep steam tea we're looking at kagoshima and shizuoka uh, in comparison so those guys when you when you have a tea from that area and you brew, you, you brew it then you have a a, um, a a low transparency in the liquor itself so we can see i mean you can see directly behind like this is super clear tea and you guys have got it in front of you as yeah well. very clear and very clean very clear like we can we'll see keep going sorry yeah. yeah so if you leave shagicha then uh, there's a murkiness that sinks to the bottom of the cup after a while and you don't get this with lighter steam teas like this one so mm. this light steam teas keeps those high tea alcohols for a longer period of time so it's able to get better storage as well because of the, the cell structures a little bit better because of not having that last firing last last l less fragility you know so the this is the question that I had in my head when when you were just you were going to talk about Aracha. So when I taught when we visited farms in in Fukuoka, they're always like, "Oh, those people in Kyoto, they they don't know what they're doing. They're 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 not steaming enough." And when I go uh, to Kyoto, they're all you know they're often like, "Oh, those deep steamers. They don't have any respect for that leaf. They're uh, they're just uh, they're they're breaking it apart to the point where you can't taste anything." and you can't taste that sort of like originality and so there's this there's this back and forth that i find really you know i'm of the opinion that it's all good you know like it's just it's a yeah. terroir thing at that point right like you, you, it's 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 yeah, okay yeah, 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 yeah. um but this uh this idea that that you chose kyoto like uh, you could have gone so many different places in the country there's lots of interesting larger produ production regions Obviously, Kyoto is, is very renowned. Like when we think Japanese tea, Kyoto is... But the biggest producer of Japanese tea in the country is Shizuoka, right? So it's, it's, it's not a volume choice that you made there. Um, no. But uh, also what's interesting is that, that Arachan and the finished product in Kyoto is often very close, right? Like a lot of people in... I, what, I, what I mean by that is this idea of being against or for finish firing. This idea of cooking the leaves at the end, like in Kyoto, the the style seems to be even when you are selling a sencha, it's it's way less toastiness. There's less like nuttiness. There's there's a big focus on on that you know that grassy flavor not being grassy. This is this is floral. This is this is good. This is this is something that I should be doing, <coughs> right? Um, and yeah, I just I find it so interesting to do aracha in a region where they're already there's a pushback against um, against finished firing in general. You know, at least what what I've been seeing. Well, I think we're talking about finished firing, and you often get a a drop in those higher notes, those more vegetal uh, high sweetnesses that you can get in it when you do a, a final firing. Right. And to keep it and to preserve these things, you need to do uh, not just without a final firing, but a few 
other things like to be able to uh, to keep this tea uh, so f uh, you know fresh, bright, uh, bright and, and delicious. We want to make sure that we're doing a very light steaming in the processing as well. Mm -hmm. So we have a we have our own factory and we produce our own tea, and we use very old machines that are about thirty years old. Wow. So these machines are uh, very gentle on the leaves; they're quite small, and the size of the tea leaf hasn't changed, but the size of the machines they use for producing the tea has changed, and this has a different effect on the leaf. So if we want to achieve very high quality, uh, very refined tea with, with great character, we want to be able to coax that out of the leaf as much as possible. If we're using bigger machines that are often much more rough with the leaf, mm -hmm. well, these have been designed for larger harvests, right. where they harvest a lower grade material and they harvest much more material from the same area. So at this point, it needs to be a bit more rough to be I, able I, I, to uh, break that down a bit more. What level of like batches are you putting through these machines? Are we talking like thirty, like thirty, 30 kilograms? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and so it's it's uh, it's you know there are some some f factories that specialize in gyokuro production, for example, and they're going to be going into those like much smaller amounts. But it's it's yeah. true. There's it's normal, really a lot more normal. Like I remember visiting um, Aichi and Aichi. There's that the not many people know that the biggest producer of matcha in in the country is in in, in in, what was it Nishio? Um, uh, it's it's in it's basically it's in Aichi Prefecture, and it used to be actually included in the map of Ujicha. Like it was it was even though it wasn't even in Kyoto Prefecture, it was considered an Ujicha, and it was interesting that that farmers could not, they couldn't pull their own unique blends for their matcha production because there was just too the requirements for these these factories, uh, the sheer volume that they needed for you to be able to produce your 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 teas was just way higher than they could ever hope to produce. Like three hundred kil, uh, like sometimes it was like three hundred kilograms minimum to 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 put through these uh, these larger factories. Um, so it's it's actually I don't know for our viewers watching like this is a really uh, awesome and unusual situation that Obubu has going on right like to be able to produce and uh, process smaller batches is something that I think a lot of farmers wish they could do and, and, and are not able to. So you, you get a lot of flexibility and, and creative room um, at Obubu then to be able to, to sort of taste the results of that year's harvest a lot more cleanly than if you were forced to blend with other people just to be able to use the factory that you, that's nearest to where you're producing. So the... I mean, I, I'm going to bring the crazy president up again. <laughs> Not only is he the farmer, but he produces all the tea too. So after he finishes a day of harvesting, he's wow. then like a, a very long one hour break to have dinner at sort of 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, before he jumps into the factory. And in springtime, he's there until 3 a.m. to finish the processing before he's up at 5 to go and start doing the harvesting again. Wow. So. It's just weeks. tea fairy dust in a cup. Exactly. <laughs> so six weeks straight in the springtime, he's doing that, and it's uh, it's really impressive stuff. That's amazing. So we, you know, we're very lucky to be able to have our factory. We, you know, manage all our own gardens, so we're able to control the moment it's planted to the moment we're drinking this cup of tea now, wherever you are in the world. Like, we've been able to control as much as possible uh, how this tea has been produced. And, so and, and so made it's a really special thing and made a very um, purposeful decision to to uh, uh, stay as close to that raw space like the aracha literally like rough tea right like to be able to mm. to, to produce teas this way w within in intentfulness is really really nice this is lovely there's a very herbaceous quality to it um, it's very clean um, I uh, um, I'm finding that I really want to taste your 2020 harvest because um, as beautiful as it was to get these, it is the 2019 and I, I feel like I was, uh, I would get a little bit more out of them. But even that being said, like even when I put that on the table that I, that um, I wasn't able to get your freshest, freshest because um, is uh, it's delicious. Like uh, it's a, it's a nice uh, gentle. Um, uh, I, I, I often find that when I do have an aracha, it can be a little bit on <laughs> pardon the pun on the rough side right so and it's well, it's kind of it, you know, it depends on the the quality of the aracha you're getting mm -hmm. because not all aracha has been designed to drink as aracha 
Okay. So most racha is, I mean, raw material for shiagecha to blend and to uh, sort, sort and blend and fire and create those flavors that people are looking for. So from the moment the, these tea bushes are planted, mm -hmm. they're designed to be uh, at, at that point a racha. Then that's the final product for us. That's what that's what you want on the table. So the 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 yabukita that you're growing. Um, mm -hmm. and that you're, is there something that you, I mean, obviously I don't want to like unveil any trade secrets here, but like, is there, is there like to be able to achieve that? Is it, is it more yeah. like at that, that end of the, the, the process of putting it through the factory, there's that brick, um, sort of cooking process. That's not really the same as finish firing, but there's like a, a slight like reduction of moisture just to finish the product at the very end. Is that like hotter or is it just, you just go with like fairly standard uh, production techniques for that very... Still. In, in the factory, mm -hmm. uh, what tends to happen in regular tea factories mm -hmm. in Japan, we have a, uh, for producing sencha, this beautiful needle shape we have here, mm -hmm. we're looking at, um, we're looking at how we can make that beautiful needle shape and reduce the moisture just enough. Right. So in most factories, the moisture content is going to be a little bit higher at the shaping machine than, than we do. We do things a little bit hotter in the shaping machine just to take out that extra bit of moisture. Right. Okay, so, so when we reach the final final product in the final dryer, we're drying for about half an hour at 100 degrees Celsius. And this is going to drop that final product to about 4% moisture content. Which you need for the finished product. Yeah. Is so other, f other, other producers that are not producing to sell aracha, but they're producing to uh, sell it for shiagecha. Mm -hmm. They're going sort of five percent is the industry standard. Right, makes sense. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. actually aracha that I've had in the past has been reduced to a five percent moisture content. So there's always something that's a little bit like um, mellow about it. It's also what I find interesting is oftentimes I'll have the aracha from a particular. Like this often happens when I'm having it with tencha, where I'm tasting the ara tencha like for matcha production, and there's this this interesting, um, I guess flavor loss that happens when uh, when it's brought over to a uh, shiage tencha when it's ready for 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 milling into matcha and as part of that is like you when you and you talked about this a little bit already is like when you curb those aromatics you're definitely yeah you're 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 reducing something you're sure you're losing a little bit of the grassiness but you're also losing like those aromatics that floral yeah. quality and losing if, the character if, of the tea yeah, it's because it's then designed to be blended and to create a flavor from that, which has so always you, been you're losing part of that, th which is a Wadzuka perspective, right? Because there's also like the perspective that by doing that, <laughs> you're <laughs> you're you're un unleashing other qualities of the tea that perhaps you wouldn't be able to taste because they were covered mm. by the the flavors here. I I love what I taste out of Kyoto. I think it's mm. amazing and it's so delicate. And um, I, I I would hate to choose between the two. I think that it's easier to love teas that are fired a little bit deeper. And I think it's a, it's, it takes a little bit more development and, and, and exploration to understand just how amazing the teas from Wadzuka are, but they are incredible. And this is a really good, um, what you've sent us, I think is a really good representation of the region. And you, it's even more interesting because it's Aracha. You I know? think but I might, uh I can see that we're starting to run out of time here, so I just yeah. want to put in a disclaimer that I don't hate Shaggy <laughs> 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 like, awesome. I, I, I love Shaggy It's delicious, it's you know, but I just want to bring the contrast in there of what these two products are. Yeah, I love I, I, it's what amazing. The, what they bring. I just feel like I have to drop that in there. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think we all can hear that from you. I think okay. it's just such a, it's such a creative and interesting path mm. for the tea you know we do um yeah like you said we are running low on time we have about two minutes left um i wanted to get your kind of words there but also um ryan uh d did you have any other quick questions for for george before we go or did you have some thoughts as well no i think you've done a, such a great job at it yeah not necessarily opposing a process but just finding something that you can do well and, and and really loving it and obviously the people you work with are the people that <laughs> inspire you to continue doing that and i mean obviously that's tasted in your tea your tea is fantastic it's now like it's world renowned we're all talking about it um 
And I just think that like, yeah, the part of it that's the most amazing is your process. And yeah, talking about how you, you treat the plants from the very beginning to produce that. And it's not just, well, we're lucky. It has a lot to do with the love that you put into it. Yeah, for sure. Designed love. <laughs> Designed love. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, very intentful, very beautiful. The packets you've just received are actually part of uh, something that we've just launched. So not the brown packet. The brown packet is the top secret one. Uh, oh, top uh, secret. Aaron sent to you guys. Oh, okay. That's some cabose that's pretty, pretty delicious. I'll, uh, I'll, so I'll hide it under the, the counter. The other one yeah. that, that Ryan was just showing. Yeah, that one. So this is uh, part of something that we're doing, which is the o online tea tours. Okay. So we like to show people around a boo-boo, take them to the tea fields, into the mountains, and do a tasting for them, and share our passion for our delicious delicious tea town with them how, how do they find and you they, they go to obubu tea yeah obubu tea.com and if you go to uh, services you can see that there's online tea tours so we actually ship packages of tea to you in advance of these tea tours so you're mm -hmm. then able to taste alongside us so like we're drinking and tasting tea now we take you through all of it and oh, that's amazing really that is awesome so way cool to experience tea and come to japan mm -hmm. all in the space of 90 minutes wow so you can do this Brilliant. virtual virtual tour um, yeah, uh, um during the pandemic you can have an opportunity to visit a tea garden virtually and drink tea along with the the person taking you on the tour that's amazing well i encourage yeah, everybody watching to factory and in our tea room as well so wow very cool yeah that's exciting i i feel like it's something that i would love to do um that is uh really it's been really amazing having you on the show today george um we've uh you're the fourth speaker today and 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 so far it's just been each each session has been so interesting um those watching right now if this is the archive version um if there's going to be the show split into different sections on youtube um those who are just tuning in we were just speaking with george from obu buti um we're going to take a short break here um pretty quick um and we'll be back uh at uh at, at 4 p.m but i just wanted to express gratitude to you george for making the time to come on and and to get us these teas and to have this opportunity to taste them um I uh, really, really impressed with um, with what I'm tasting today. I think it's it's really good. Not, not that, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say that as if I'm like an end all be all at all. But I'm just I'm I've um, I, I you love. You made us happy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I don't know how to express that more simply. I'm such a wordy individual. Thank, thank you, you very guys. much. You have made us happy. Thank you, Ryan. That's a good way to say it. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you for for inviting me on today. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome. a lot of fun. Cool. All right. You take care, man. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. So, um, and, uh, Ryan, so we are. You're not quite alone. Uh, you're not, not quite. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, so, uh, Ryan, we are, uh, <laughs> now we're alone. I kind of got this last word <laughs> there. So, um, we're going to take a short break here. Um, we will uh, be back at uh, four o'clock. Um, who do we have on next? Do you want to let the viewers know? All right, let's take out the hard copy. A tea Can Tea by Claudia Tse from Vancouver. Yeah. This is going to be great. Um, uh, this is our first time uh, meeting, and so uh, we're just hoping for the best because it, this is where it gets its, um, its most exciting. It's where we get to explore tea with new friends. Yeah, really looking forward to it. So we'll see you again at, uh, at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks so much. 10 minutes. 10 minutes.